All right, welcome back to eSIM Studios. We have the Google Pixel 10 Pro right here. We have the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL right here. And we have the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. Today we're gonna test performance. We'll see real world performance gains if there are any, right? I'm sure there's some, but we will find out if, if there is any and or how much. And then we'll test it to uh, the best chip on the market right now. Now we're going to do a number of benchmarks. We're going to do Geekbench 6, CPU, GPU, and they, they have a new AI uh, benchmark test that I guess we'll run just for shits and giggles. And then we're going to found a new app that's going to run CPU throttling tests to see if they throttle the CPU under high, high and or heavy load or high temperature. This is on beta software. So this is on Android 16. What is it on? Like QPR 3. I don't know. I lost count. Of, it's whatever the newest, latest Android beta operating system is this one. This is also on beta software. So this is also on One UI 8 um, Android 16 beta software. And then this is obviously stock firmware on this Android 16. So all of these are Android 16. These two are on beta. That's stable build. Let's do the most probably common which is Geekbench and then we'll run the AI testing once we're done so let's go to benchmarks let's run so let's go to benchmarks and let's run a test ready let's go ahead and open it up yes let's run it all right I'm gonna pause it we'll be right back with the results holy crap look at these numbers this is shocking I did not expect this. So look at these two numbers. Look at this number. That is absolutely amazing. So this performed better than I thought, right? The Pixel the Pixel 10 Pro Moonstone 256. This does have the UFS 4.0 storage. Got a single core score of just over 2,300 points. That's higher than the S25 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Elite chipset in there now again it is running beta software but look numbers are numbers and numbers don't lie so the tensor g5 scored better in single core performance than the snapdragon 8 elite with just scoring over 2100 points absolutely insane now the pixel 9 pro xl got a rubbish <laughs> single core score of just under 1900 coming in at 1879 and then look at this multi-core score, almost doubling the multi-core score of the previous generation. That's a high score. This this has scored higher than what I've seen online, than what I've read in articles. I'm actually shocked by these results. Um, you, have, you have a multi-core score of 6,385 points compared to a multi-core score from the previous generation, 3,364 points. There you see the big score of just over 8100 points but 6385 is very respectable i did not expect this to beat the s25 ultra in any of these categories and for it to beat it in single core that's shocking i mean look the the proof is in the pudding right all i did was pause the video because i didn't want to sit here for 10 minutes and just blabble on i'm sure you didn't want to hear me do that but the scores are the scores so that is Geekbench. Now, let's run... Actually, let's do a, a GPU. Let's go back and run a GPU test, right? Very, very shocking. So, now, which CPU test should I do? OpenCL? Uh, let's do Vulkan. All right, and I will see you all back in just a second. Okay, and we are back. Sorry, Ed. Here is the Geekbench 6 GPU benchmark, right? This is the Vulkan. Now... I have no idea how the Pixel, I have no idea how the Pixel 10 Pro with a, assumingly a better, newer uh, GPU performed less than the ARM GPU that's in the Pixel 9 series. So the Vulkan GPU test got a score of 3704, right, on the Pixel 10 Pro. The Pixel 9 Pro scored 9,319, and the S25 Ultra with the Snapdragon also has an ARM Mali GPU 
scored 15,748. So a wide, wide ranging numbers uh, results here. So interesting enough. Now, what I'm going to do real quick, and I'm not going to make this, I'm not going to make this long. Let me run a open CL. I'll pause it and we'll come back with the results and then we'll move on to the CPU throttling test. So let's go to open CL, open CL, open CL. Let's go ahead and run that and we'll be right back. Wow. Well, there we have it. So it does appear that the GPU in the newer Google Pixel 10 series is less powerful than the GPU found in the 9 series. So the Geekbench 6 OpenCL GPU test on the Pixel 10 Pro scored a score of 3,235 points. The Pixel 9 Pro XL scored 8,457 points. And the big boy S25 Ultra I had an idea it was going to be big, scored 14,752 points. Now, let's move on. Let's do the AI testing real quick before Geekbench has a new AI benchmark test. So let's, I've never ran that before. And let's go ahead and run that photo. So here's the Geekbench AI benchmarking test. Geekbench AI measures performance for everyday AI, AI tasks using tests that model real world applications the ai benchmark takes several minutes to complete so i guess you can choose the framework there's only one test there and you can test the cpu and gpu and then in in api let's run this test and we shall be right back so let's run that and run that all right and there you have it so here are the results for the ai testing on the cpu testing AI capabilities. Uh, first ever test for me uh, as far as the new Geekbench AI testing, but you can see the Google Pixel 10 Pro has a single precision score of 2270. Now that's more than the single score of the Pixel 9 Pro, which is, excuse me, 9 Pro XL, which is 1814. You get the half precision score of the Pixel 10 Pro on the left of 2158. And then with the Pixel 9 Pro XL on the right, half pre precision score of 1748. And then the quanti quantized score on the Pixel, uh, Pixel 10 Pro on the left of 3121. And quantized score of the Pixel 9 Pro XL on the right, 2588. And then you got the beast, the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra, which blows everything away. Single precision score, 2468 half precision score 2469 and then you get your quantized score 4239 so i i kind of expected these scores nothing that shocking right you expected this one to be better than this one and you expected this one to beat all of these but let's go ahead and real quick let's run the gpu score and then we'll finally get to the cpu throttling you know, ready see y'all in a second all right, well, this is interesting. As you can tell, these two devices, the Pixel 9 Pro XL and the S25 Ultra, both finished the test. This got hung up at 35%, 35% w uh, through the test. It got locked up at the, I noticed it wouldn't go any farther than 35%, and I just simply waited around, waited for about 15 minutes, and uh, while I was making a thumbnail for this video, and it just crashed. <laughs> So I guess it inconclusive on the uh, AI benchmark score for the GPU, but we'll look at these two just to give you a kind of a heads up. I'm, I'm sure the, if it did finish, the Pixel 10 Pro XL would probably be slightly better, maybe 10%, five to 10% better than these scores. So, but here is the big boy S25 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Elite. These are the scores, 1991 versus 1128. 2871 versus 1750 and then 2423 versus 1291 cpu thermal throttling okay so here's a new app right so here's the app this is the name of it cpu throttling test i'm assuming you can run a you can run a different number of tests you can run 5 10 15 20 minute even a 40 minute test let's do this one multi-thread Pro. Uh, the Pro version is $3.49, $3.49. So we got 20 minutes, fully accurate, fully accurate. Let's go. Okay, so the test has finished. And 
kind of performed as expected, right? So I knew the Snapdragon 8 Elite would crank out the juice. And I knew these would, you know, not be really flattering. But it's interesting to see when you look at these charts. And let me show you in a little more detail. And I'll again apologize for it being kind of blurry. But check this out. So this is the S25 Ultra. You get the current temperatures. It just ended right, right about 40 degrees Celsius. Maximum temperature of 58 degrees Celsius. Minimum 41 degrees Celsius. And you can tell the temperature of the CPU up and down, up and down while it was doing its testing. There's also a big chart as well. And then down here, you can see the chart. Now, you can pause this if you want to, to uh, pause the video so you can get a little better uh, idea of the scores and how it performed on these charts. I'm going to look at the let's look at the pixels and then we'll go look at the detailed results so here's the new pixel pixel 10 pro these, all these devices are fairly warm but you get a current max and minimum up on the top section so current temperature is 39 celsius max was 39 so it's at its hottest right now 32 degrees celsius was the minimum temperature and you can see it's slowly cranking up and the performance dipping as it got hotter cool on the left in the green as the test goes on and it gets more red the performance drops and here's compared to the previous version the pixel 9 series on the right now this is last year's cpu this year's cpu so how, how is their new cpu performing and again we'll look at a more detailed chart here shortly but you can tell the new one ran a little hotter although they did both max out at 39 degrees celsius and almost had a matching minimum temperature of 31 celsius degrees celsius for the pixel 9 series on the right and 32 degrees celsius on the left for the pixel 10 pro pretty jarring as far as how the cpu performs under loads right you can see the up and down up and down up and down right here and then this one's kind of smoothed out so it looks like it's a little more optimized obviously it is more powerful we did prove that in the Geekbench test. Now look at this compared to the S25 Ultra. So the S25 Ultra perfor stays performing pretty good even when look it even improved its performance as it got hotter right so it dipped down a little bit after the green on the right the S25 Ultra but look as it got hotter it kept on kept on kept on chugging along so not much performance now it did get hotter right i think there is a maximum temperature of 58 degrees celsius and then you have a maximum temperature on the pixels at 39 degrees celsius so definitely got hotter but you know performance is still there so you see the tail of two different ideologies with these cpu manufacturers actually i guess three <laughs> manufacturers because samsung's in the middle google's on the left and qualcomm's on the right pretty different results i mean when you look at a little more detail it's pretty different and look at the s25 ultra so the s25 ultra's cpu definitely cranking out the performance right it says you can download these test results what i'm going to do is download each one of these and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the video description below. So if you want to look at these results in detail and look at them uh, on your own and kind of scour through the information, please be my guest. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and download these and I'm gonna post them in the description box down below for everybody. So I'll let you go on that. If you got any questions or you want me to run another test or a specific test that you prefer. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Am I testing these wrong? Let me know. Do you want me to look at something in more specific as far as statistics? Let me know. Hit me up in the comments. I'll check you out on the next one. Peace.